So now we can start like normal people. Yay! So, um, were you born in Zimbabwe? Yes, I was okay. born in Zimbabwe. And then you lived there till 19? Yes, I lived there till 19. And then I went to the UK okay. for six years. And then I moved to South Africa. And I've been here for, I think, 11 years now. Yeah. Yeah. Do you like South Africa? Do you not want to go back to the UK? <laughs> no. Do you not just... <laughs> it's so cold there. It's cold and... Yeah, it's cold. And it's yeah. expensive. Life yeah. is expensive. Yeah. So expensive. So from what I understand, you went to the UK with this idea that you were going to go study, right? And studying has become a big part of your life. Mm -hmm. But what role was music playing while you were pursuing the studying? Um, it was just like a side thing. I mean, so when I went to the UK, I didn't do any studying at all. I, like, I think what I did was, you intend to study? I was going to study marketing or some like random <laughs> thing, which I never ended up doing. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, so when I moved to South Africa, that's when I started singing because I used to work in a restaurant where the waiters and waitresses entertained um, people during dinner or whatever. Really? Yeah. So what, were you like the supper time entertainment or did you have to like with a plate walk around and sing? No, so how it works was in between service you sing. Oh. So like there would be breaks where you go and you, like the waiters and the waitresses would sing and service stops. And then once people get off stage, then service resumes. So that's how it would work. <clears throat> so what were you singing? Covers, for like, you know, like the popular old songs and stuff. So like a lot of Whitney Houston and stuff. Yeah, not so much Whitney Houston, but like, because I couldn't reach that height. <laughs> Neither can I. <laughs> but yeah, it was like, you know, covers, mm. like classic songs or like contemporary pop hits and stuff. Um, and so when I started doing that, and obviously, you know, being in that space, there were a lot of people who were musicians or um, pursuing music careers. I mean, there's quite a few people who I used to work with there who are who have sort of careers now. Oh, like who? Like Numfusi. Ah, okay. Numfusi's one. We used to work together. Graham Watkins, mm. Matthew uh, Mormon. All very Cape Town. Yeah. <laughs> Um, who else can I think of? Like, there's a whole bunch of people. Like, um, Shannon has a, has a band called Logos that makes this amazing alt pop. Yeah. Um, like, there's just like a whole bunch of like really amazing people who I met when I was working there. Mm. Um, so yeah, so and I even like started a band. Oh. Kind of. Is this the swing band? Oh no. So the swing band I joined because. Um, Jamie, who plays the saxophone, used to work there. And he was like, oh, I'm in this band and we're looking for uh, someone to sing. And I was like, okay, cool. Um, so I went through and like sang a couple of tunes and they were like, hey, like, do you want to play with us? And that's how I ended up playing in the band and then managing the band for like a few years. What was the band called? The Swing Setters. Swing Setters. Mm -hmm. Well, the swing setters do. Okay. <laughs> and we used to like sing um, original swing stuff. Yeah. And then of course a few covers. But it was so much fun because there was like it was quite a big band actually. Yeah. I mean eight people. I look back at it now and I think, oh my gosh, how did we manage that? Mm. You know. But we were very fortunate because we had a place to rehearse weekly, yeah. you know, um, and we didn't have to pay for it. It was actually yeah. quite nice. What songs were you singing in at the at the restaurant? Oh, uh, like what was your go-to like? My go-to song was Oh man, what's my go-to <laughs> song? The disco stuff. Yeah. Um, disco Inferno was one of mine. Mm. Um, Jeez, how can I, how can I not But it was always like the upbeat, like you wanted to Yeah, because you had to have a, a range, so like at the beginning of the night, you sing the more slow thing. I used to sing Shadi's Smooth Operator. 
Um, I'm definitely gonna ask you to sing Smooth Operator at some point. Not today. <laughs> Might not be today. Not today. But at some point. Not today. <laughs> but um, um, so then um, after the swing setters, you started another band. No, actually, so. Somewhere in between the swing setters, I was it, like, we had another little thing. Yeah. Or like it was before the swing setters. I can't remember. Um, with my friend Shannon. And it never actually took off for some reason. Um, because we just didn't get to that point where we were ready to start performing stuff. Mm. What kind of stuff were you writing? Like what kind of music? What kind of it was. It was like, um, how can I describe it? Like kind of like Amy Winehouse, oh, that okay. dun, t, 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 like that. Yeah, and it was really cool. It was fun because Shannon's like an amazing writer, and I wrote some of the tracks as well. And we even recorded it. I'm a fine stuff now. You're making me like you definitely have to go find these um, things. Um, but yeah, and it's so weird because Shannon and I have been wanting to work together for such a long time. And that was supposed to be the thing, but then she decided she wanted to um, to start her own band. Okay. But she was also in like another like rock band before, and and I was like, yeah, girl, I feel you. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know, you're amazing. Yeah. Go it, go and do the thing. So it wasn't even like. You wasn't know, be for anything. Nah, nah. Yeah. We were just like, man, this is fun. Um, but yeah, she had to like her own sort of ideas of what she want, wanted to make and she was playing drums actually in that mm. band that we'd okay. started and she was like nah my chops aren't what they used to be um, and now she has an amazing like duo okay which is really cool and she's like she's an amazing writer so yeah so that was very short lived and then after that it was just like solo stuff yeah the kind of stuff that so, I'm doing now at what point, like, take me to the exact moment, paint the picture of when you decide, I'm actually going to pursue house music and I'm going to pursue it seriously. Um, you know, people ask me that question all the time. And there isn't a moment for you? No, there isn't. It's like, I always wanted to sing house music, right? Mm. Like, I grew up listening to, um, what's her name? Crystal Waters, like, you know, that era of, like, the big, big voices, yeah. you know, Robin S. And oh, I interviewed Robin S. once. Really? Yeah. I She's missed her when great. she came. I think it was her, and um, I know they came for, like, a D Divas of Dance thing. They're coming again now, though. Really? Uh, I'm going to send you the flyer, because I saw Melanie put it up, but I'm going to send it to you. And she was like, everybody is so, like enamored over Chris Brown redoing my work but you know nobody's booking me and I was like yeah because that's that's the thing that's how it <laughs> that's how the cookie crumbles I feel her yeah okay so then you always knew that this is the music that you wanted to say yeah I think you know like instinctively it was like it's what drew me to it. and I love dancing like I go out I can have a good time. Like yeah. that's that's my thing. So, just being able to sing and dance and you know all those things coming together, that was that. But then it just became it it was it became like a gradual. It was a gradual thing. Like I never like now I have a job. Yeah. Right. I work nine to five. So like I always say to people, I've never only ever just done music. It's always been music and something else. Mm. And a lot of people seem to think I'm a full time musician, which I'm not. So, do you want to be though? I actually don't know. Okay. Because, like for example, I enjoy the work that I'm doing now. But speaking of um, you loving to dance, I read somewhere that you don't write sitting down. No. You have to be dancing while you're coming up with a song. Yeah, most of the time. I have to be moving. It's like, it's either dancing or walking or standing or something. I don't, yeah, I, I can't even remember when. I don't even write down like yeah. stuff. Like I don't write. You freeze that? Like it's all in your head. Yes. And then I. That's how. So I build it. I build it through repetition. And sometimes I forget. <laughs> You're like Jay Z Queens. <laughs> like, <laughs> never mind the Jack King. Like yeah, sometimes. Where, where does that come from? Why I do you not know. write? I don't know. I really don't know. And, and there's no like uh, big. You know, 
story behind it. I don't know. So and, and also it's because most of the time I'm listening to the music on my phone in my ears. Oh. That's also the other thing. Um, and like I said, because I go to work and everything, I have to find like time in a way to actually write music. Yeah. So whether I'm on like the taxi or in an Uber or something, or if I'm walking, like that's just like I just have to. So I've always just done that because I I don't. Yeah, I don't have like a um, a schedule for when I. Right. When you're creative, yeah. yeah. Like it's just, like when when I had my son at home, it would be night time. Okay. Like and really late mm. as well. Um, but now that I'm on my own, it's like whenever. I think I've, I'll probably like find more time for it now. But still, that I, I thought I would, but now I. It's your habit now. Yeah, like that's can't. that's how you do yeah, it. Yeah, like that's how I do it. That's okay. how I do it. I just listen whenever I'm on the go. Or yeah. And I also feel like the reason why I do that is because I, I'm always thinking about how does it feel when you're listening to it? Mm-hmm. How does your body move to to the song? Yeah. Yeah. That's I think that's the big thing. Okay. I, I don't think I, it's a conscious thing, but I I know like when I'm writing, that's like what I'm thinking about. When the music is flowing, how's that like going? Okay. Like through your body. So, um, so one song that I didn't know was you, but I know that I know the song uh-huh. is "Liquid Love." Oh wow! <laughs> yes, really? Yes. Oh wow! Like you know, it's a weird. Um, I don't even know what to call it. Like, I think, you know, on social media, you have an affinity for people. Like, you have a fondness for people. Like, even if you don't know them, know them. Yeah. And you're one of those people. So, in my mind, I never think, like, Jackie Queens. I think Jackie from Twitter. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, like, when I hear some of your songs, I'm like, I know that song. Oh, wow. And, like, on radio especially, people never say, oh, that's... Jackie Queens and so and so, or so and so featuring. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That happens like, a lot. Yeah. If so they featuring back and out. Yeah, yeah. You know? So let's talk about Liquid Love. Mm-hmm. How did you write that song? What was happening? Uh, no, that was just one of those songs that I wrote, like, out of the blue, with no, like, particular life moment or anything attached yeah, to it. Yeah, right. No, seriously. Yeah, right. That is, Are that you trying is... to tell me you've never thought, pick up the phone? Like, no, I thought, have. Call me. Obviously, I have, but then, like, that song wasn't attached to anything or anyone. But sometimes I write stuff and it's like, I can tell you that I wrote the song because of this that was okay. happening or I wrote the song for this particular person, if you know what I mean. Yeah. So that's not one of the... And I remember writing that song in the kitchen of like our apartment where we used to stay in Cape Town. I remember writing that. Yeah. Um, yeah, with my earphone on. And I had been struggling, I think, to write that song. And it was like, the, I was trying to think of like the, the, the cadence. Because I don't know if you've listened to the original, like with Lucas Productions, they're very, um, uh, what is the word? Like it's sort of like very down tempo and like chilled. Yeah. Um, yeah, and that was like one of the few tracks of his that I did. Um, that I like I didn't struggle with it as such, but it was just like, yo, this is like really neat. How am I gonna work around it? You know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that one was just like I don't even know where that came from mm-hmm. to be honest. But I can clearly remember I was in the kitchen. When I wrote that song. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. There's also like this imagery, right, in the song about scuffing your knees Mm -hmm. and putting your hands together. Mm -hmm. And it made me wonder about what are the things that you pray tirelessly for or about? And not like, oh, my son, because what mom doesn't (laughs) pray for his son? But like, like, (laughs) don't give me that (laughs) obvious answer, please. Like, what are the things that you hold close to you that you're like, I pray about this thing? Um... Well, I don't pray, but I can tell you that there are certain things like um, 
myself a lot, you know, when I think about like the things that I, I want to achieve, like personally. Yeah. Um, and uh, lately it's been about uh, energy, man. Like just the energy to do the things. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's, yeah, that's been like one vitality, of, energy, yes, and vitality. Exactly, yeah. you know, like, yeah, yeah, that's the perfect word for yeah. it. Um, I, I also know. think about energy as in people, like, those mm-hmm. are the things I ask for, like, the universe. <laughs> you were like, like hey, right. allow me to not foster, please. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, I, I like, like, or at least for the past, like, year or so. It's been about, yeah, it's just been about, uh, because I moved to Joburg about a year and a bit ago. And it's so different from Cape Town. Um, So, you know, like you have all these sort of things available to you. um, And you kind of want to do them all the the time. Or there's just like certain things that I'm thinking, oh, you know, this is great. But I can't do everything. Yeah. So yeah, so that's definitely like one of one of those things that I, I think about and meditate upon a lot is just sort of guidance, like knowing what to do and knowing what to leave and knowing what to pursue, you know. Yeah, I would okay. say those are the things. And yeah, like you said, vitality, the energy. Yeah, I'm there. With you. Yeah. <laughs> like, so let's talk about maybe came in mm. um is that a song you perform a lot yeah yeah i do i, I perform the dj Sims remix yeah i really like that one really are there cool. ones you don't like because with with your specific space the song goes through a million iterations I know. and some which you probably don't even know about like oh. people who just decide yeah. i love this song and i want to do my own version yes are there versions you don't like? There are some. <laughs> I won't even lie. Like there's some, some, like some remixes that I've listened to. And I'm like, mm. and the thing is, because you don't own the song, you don't have any control over it. Uh, especially why is that? Because it's if a feature. The... So the the song belongs to the person who's featuring you in a sense. Yeah. Uh, so, so you just own the intellectual property of your rights. Yes, exactly. So, you know, if they decide, like, there's this one project that I'm just like, no, enough. <laughs> Why? What's happening? Because there's like a million versions oh. of it. And I'm like, you know, and, and I understand why people do it, you know, because people will do like remixes to replenish or refresh their catalog and you know there's like you know there's logical reasons for yeah it, right for sure. um, but then I feel like there needs to be some kind of like thinking mm-hmm. behind it you know so yeah like you can't just remix everything and yeah. have like 50 million versions of a song you yeah. know there's just yeah it's, it's, it's not it's not something that I have control over um, but for the most part, I mean, a lot of the remixes have been super great. Yeah. Yeah. So I think songwriters are very sneaky, right? Because they tend to act as though things are like, whatever you want to interpret, you know, that's fine. I was just writing something. Yeah. And that's okay because, like, people don't want to tell you their deepest, darkest secrets. You yeah. Know? But I always try and, like, figure out some of the like where the lyrics are coming from right Mm -hmm. so particularly with something like caving in Mm -hmm. where you're like embrace me now Mm -hmm. um on on the surface level it sounds like a lover must embrace you yeah yeah that's what that song is about it's about sex okay yeah tell me more about writing the song about (laughs) sex (laughs) i I was walking down because i when i still in cape town i still in pinelands and it was i mean it is a very like pretty place to them, you know, and we used to live near this, like there's a canal that runs through it, um, and I used to uh, pick up my son from school and take him to soccer practice, and like basically everything was within walking distance, and I used to walk, so that's, I, I can tell you, I remember writing that walking, um, walking and thinking about sex, no, actually, 
<laughs> I was like walking and thinking, man, how, how am I going to write this song about sex and not talk about sex? But why did you want to write about sex in the first place? What was happening <laughs> for you to go... I want to write about sex. <laughs> no, because, you know, there are times when I feel uh, I'm writing about the same thing all the time, okay. like too often. <clears throat> okay. And like, especially like with my earlier stuff, I, feel some, I was actually thinking about it the other days that like it was a little bit more varied than the stuff that I'm doing now in terms of like thematically okay. and that's I think that was possible because of the style of, of the music mm. like that's another production from Luca so you know like it, for some reason it just kind of opens up you know possibilities mm. so yeah so that one was like yeah man I was like I want to write about sex but then I don't know I don't want to use the words and I don't want it to sound like you want it to be like an open so when you hear it you can think one thing and then when yeah. somebody else hears it they're thinking something else which is what I said when I started this question that's how you writers be <laughs> yeah but that's how the but for the for you know just to clear it up it's about sex okay, okay. okay. it's about got doing it. the, the nasty got it yeah so you said um, sometimes you find that you're writing about the same thing over and over mm -hmm. is that a result of what the audience wants and what they gravitate towards or do you feel like you are in a creative space where that's what's happening yeah so most of the time it's just um, like it goes with the feeling and then I start and then that's what comes out but then sometimes I have to make like conscious choices about okay like you've done this before <laughs> so do something else or and I think at least in recent times because like there's just so much going on I actually haven't had enough time to replenish my creative self okay you know what I mean yeah you know like reading or like going out and seeing different creative things or I don't know stuff consuming yeah. new music for example you know so that tends to happen when I'm in that sort of, when I'm creating, um, how can I put it? Um, when I'm creating almost for the sake of it. Okay. Because like, I have to sing, I have to release stuff, I have to, you know, that kind of thing. So that's what tends to happen when I get into that kind of cycle. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I have to make a lot more time for to nurture my creative self to okay. replenish the well, actually. Okay. Yeah, and to learn new new skills as well. Because uh, when I had the time, I used to do all kinds of things. I used to take like songwriting courses online. Um, you know, I used to read books and writing songs and stuff like that. So. Obviously, to improve, uh, you know, my skills, yeah. um, and that's something that I haven't been doing in a while. And now I can see, like, as I'm creating, and it, I think it's also another reason why I haven't released a lot this year mm. is because there's been so much happening, like with moving to Cape from Cape Town to Joburg, work and yeah, it's the, a lot. The kid going to high school, gosh, <laughs> high school, oh, the really? teenagers. <laughs> Night. So, for a lot of people, when they hear Bay Electronica, mm -hmm. they think J Electronica. Yeah, that's but, where I got it from. <laughs> so, why did you name your indie record company Bay Electronica? Because I love J Electronica, like I have a huge crush on you. Okay, Electronica. So, that's why you called it Bay Electronica? Um, well, that was where I got the name from. The Bay part was just like, because um, like it's women centered, the label yeah. itself. Um, and I wanted something that would kind of speak to that in a way without saying women or using so I just wanted something fun also like you know when people hear bay electronic and they're like what is like bay as in like person lover like yeah maybe maybe not bay as in bay it's just fun you know um, music for for women by women, by women you know that yeah. kind of thing so yeah, but uh, yeah, I love Jay <laughs> And is Higher the first single that's going to come off? This delayed? year. Yeah. Yeah, this year. Because okay. it's been going since 2015. Ah, dope. I didn't know that. Yeah. 
I started okay. it. So I've had a few. This is gonna be my sixth release mm. on my label. Yeah. Okay. So you're gonna have to send me like everything that's on the label so I can <laughs> Check look it, it out. <laughs> um, but higher, which is the upcoming single. Yeah. Um, you talk about every day you your season. Oh yeah. Basically. Um, and that there's no reason for you to not thrive and fly and mm-hmm. all of these things. So was that a letter to yourself? Mm. In a way, yeah, you know, like, yeah, because this, like I said, you know, I've just been going through like a whole like big sort of life shuffle, like shake. Um, and there are times when I really have to uh, convince myself that yeah this is the thing like you want to keep doing this whatever it is so yeah that that was a song that was also one of those songs where i feel like jackie you're kind of doing the same thing because I, I like people know me for singing this sort of motivational inspirational house music stuff yeah which i really love which is very close to me because that's you know who i am um and i battled for a long time um, after writing that song, thinking about whether I was gonna release it, because what actually happened was it was a demo, yeah, for someone else's compilation. Oh, okay. Yeah, and um, I actually wrote that song for that specific purpose, um, for the compilation, but also within writing that, obviously, it was like one of those where I was like. You know, let me let me let me write something that's like really um, going to lift me up. Mm. You know, um, so I wrote it specifically for that purpose. But then, because the producer was taking a long time to put it together, we missed the deadline. We didn't uh, get to pitch the song. Yeah. Um, and then I was like, yeah, this is a really great song. I'll release it anyway. Um, and then I got Sebastian Dutch from Zambia to do a remix, and it's a kick ass remix. Yeah. It's like it's amazing. Um, so, yeah, so that was, that was that. So, and I think that's the nice thing about having a label is that, you know, when I do stuff like that, like when I make music and people either for whatever reason don't end up using it, I can put it out, which is really great. Because then nothing. Uh, goes unused yeah you know that's dope so so yeah that's that's the story of that one cool can't wait to finally have it because it is <laughs> upcoming no um, I'll send it to you I'll because cool. I'll, I'll, it's, it's done now it's just yeah. I need to get my life together so I can actually release the thing <laughs> all right well thank you very much for chatting with me thank you and we will catch you on the waves and on things. the 